have one summer left before I move back in with my parents and start seriously contemplating suicide. I wonder if there's a way to do it that's not a cliche. I don't know. High school is a nightmare. I thought college would be different. I was the hopeful young caterpillar who went into the cocoon and emerged four years later as an extremely fat, embittered caterpillar. I mean, that's what made graduation such a gut-busting joke. I mean, every loser alum that ever donated a bench gets on the podium and tells me it's my turn to change the world. Yeah. Thanks for the handoff, Grandpa. I'm a college DJ. I have no money. And I play bass for a band that's going nowhere because every other person in this country is either in a band or wants to be. At this point, the only real use I have for my diploma is if I run out of rolling papers. So before the summer is over, I'd like for one of you to show me that my four years on the air haven't been a complete and total waste. If anyone has the answer, give me a call. You know the number. Registered Democrat? Green Party. Bitch. So where are you going, man? Ann Arbor, Michigan. No shit. That's where I'm going. My sister just graduated from U of M. Studied poetry, if you can believe that shit. She's adopted, really screwed up. So what do you study, man? People. Well, you can start with me. The name's Toad. Duncan. Nice yo-yo. Thanks. I don't know, doctor. I just feel like I'm following the path of all women. You go to college, get educated, meet a man, get married. Five or six bad haircuts later, you're driving to stress management class in a Volvo station wagon, eating Weight Watchers flavor crisps. But I can't really blame Calvin. At least he has a direction. It's nice to know people that know what they're going to do. I mean, after all, that's what the American dream is really all about. But then again, even if the fence is white picket, it's still a fence, a border, a prison. It's like when I was reading my feminist studies textbook. I was a Cosmo. I don't remember. Anyway, the article talked about how men try to dominate women through language. Like, the word woman ends with M-A-N, and menstruation begins with M-E-N. I mean, to me, that is kind of the essence of the problem. What do you think, doctor? Chicks, man. Fucking chicks. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure. Can you elaborate? Well, I was dating this girl. She wanted to be a hippie, but leg hair freaked her out. You know the type. Anyway, I loved her and all that shit, right? So I sent her flowers. I wrote her songs. Not one mention of tits. Love songs? Fucking A. At first, she digs it. She thinks I'm real romantic and shit. So I asked her to be my steady thing. She says yes, of course. But then she starts telling me her really big secrets. Like, she wanted to drop ass and read the fountainhead in 10 minutes. Wow. I know. I know. Warning signs. Toad's dating a bona fide psychopath. But when you want to get laid, that shit seems deep. Anyway, after I make her a mixtape with a mandatory number of Indigo Girl songs, I'm thinking it's time to hit the sack running, butt bugglies, that kind of thing. But she didn't want to. Why don't you guys go out? Three days. Well, she probably wanted to get more intimate. Exactly. Chicks, man. Fucking chicks. Well, Oprah, I'll be honest. Painting to me is an expression of my inner turmoil and pain. You see, when I was 12, my father wouldn't take me to a Tom Petty concert. How's it going, babe? I don't know. I got the talk show speech down. I still haven't painted anything. I don't know what's wrong with me. Don't worry about it so much. You'll figure it out. Really? Yeah, you're one stroke away from Oprah. Thanks, Squeeze. Want to make love? When I get back. How about a cake? I could bake you a cake. I still haven't finished the pumpkin squares. Just keep working. Okay. 
You see, Oprah, to me, Tom Petty was more than a rock star. To me, he was God. So according to this Freud wipe, every chick I score is just my way of saying, yo, ma, let's get down to business. In so many words. I can see that. So how about you, man? When's the last time you jumped loins first into the brush? Actually, Toad, I've never copulated. Damn, no wonder you smoke so much. Wait, I don't understand. Don't you get lonely? Not really. I'm interested in other things. Like what? Talking to people. What do you talk about? Their lives as they relate to patterns in society. You need to get laid, man. You know, I was reading Salinger the other day. Catch her in the rye. Of course. Anyway, I saw holding Caulfield as a metaphor for all of us. You know? He was in a big city with money in his pockets, but he had no idea what to do. OK, boys, what can I get you? Two espressos. Coming right up. And being like Holden, we are aware of the futility of our existences and of the hypocrisy of everything that surrounds us. Did you see her ass? Are you kidding? Do you guys need anything else? Can't you see I'm discussing the African-American struggle against the oppressive white establishment? Sorry. Fucking honky. Word. What am I going to do, Squeeze? Just tell Calvin your brother's coming in today. He'll understand. Mm, but the bar exam is next week. Calvin has to study. So? You've never met my brother, Squeeze. Why? What's he like? His name is Toad. He's a Pisces. Calvin's never going to allow it. Wait. Didn't you take that 12-step assertiveness training program? Yeah, I did. Well, what happened? I threw up. So if you're this philosophical nomad and shit, how come you're coming to a college town? Well, I just met this guy from London. He said that America was nothing but an enormous McDonald's drive through Sounds like a dick. Well, I'm not sure about the dick part, but... I wanted to find out if he was right or not. It's the Y Ann Arbor. It's the first place I thought of. How long you been on the road, man? can't remember. Oh, it's a long time. Well, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Rimbaud? Rambo? Fuck yeah, man. Sloan's on the no, edge. No, Rimbaud, the French poet. Have you ever read The Drunken Boat? Mm -mm. I like the title, though. Well, Rimbaud was young, like we are now. He wrote about his travels and how he sometimes felt like a prisoner in the freedom of the open sea. You understand? Mm -mm. Let me put it to you this way. Do you like the doors? Jim. Well, when you're listening to the doors, you're hearing his struggle to embrace a higher level of freedom by embracing chaos. You understand? Oh, man, I only have the greatest hits. Okay. I mean. Okay. Um. Have you ever found yourself hungry for a certain type of food, but you didn't know what it was? Well? You go down to the kitchen, you check the refrigerator, it's not there, you drive all over town, can't find it, and so you just eat whatever's there? Yeah. See, that describes most of the people I've ever met. I still don't know why. All I know is, I don't want to die until I've literally seen the entire world. I hear you, man. I hear you. Honey, I'm home. How was class, honey? Pretty tough, honey. I'll tell you. Once I finally become a corporate lawyer and help big business rape the land and its people, I'll be fine, but... <sighs> This law school thing is just plain tough. I know, honey. Is 
that organic tofu I smell? It sure is. Oh, that's great, honey. <sighs> I'm sure glad I let you talk me into this bullshit PC health food craze and systematically destroy my ability to enjoy anything. I know, honey, and I'm sure glad I met you. Now I can sell out my youthful ambitions for a dog and 2.5 children that I'll emotionally abuse because of my empty and meaningless existence. I just can't wait until we get married and stop having sex. Amen to that. I love you. And I love you. Oh, honey, did you remember to iron my tie-dyes? <sighs> Shit. How was your review class, Calvin? Like sitting through a poetry reading. What's for dinner? I made something special. Yeah, organic tofu. Mmm, I'm just licking my chops over here. Why can't we have some meat for a change? Calvin, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruelty to animals and saturated fat. Big fucking deal. Did you get any beer? Calvin? What? I was thinking, if you really want steak, I could cook you some. I don't have to eat it. When's he coming? Tomorrow. Jenny, the bar exam is next week. I know. If I fail that exam, I'll have to sit on my ass for another six months. Do you know what that'll do to me? He's my brother, Calvin. Every time your parents throw him out, he comes slithering to you. They didn't throw him out this time. Really? Well, regardless of why he's coming, the fact is he's going to be here. And you're gonna have to tell him no this time, Jenny. I'm sorry, I can't deal with it. Not this week. Where are you going? Video store. Not Nintendo again. Don't push me, babe. So then what did you do? I started cleaning. Did you vacuum? Twice. Did you reorganize the spice rack? Alphabetically. Jenny, what satisfaction does this cleaning give you? I don't know. I guess I'm just a prisoner of the anal stage. Are you two still planning to get married? Well, we haven't set a date, but we were planning on it. I mean, things were going so well, and then... I don't know. We've never had problems like this before. Have you discussed this with him? I don't want to distract him. The bar exam's almost over. But, Jenny, don't you think it's important to share your feelings while you're feeling them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I believe in soulmates. Real, transcendental communication. That's why I'm a folk singer. Would you like to hear a song? If it would help. Good thing I brought my guitar. I'm a codependent moonbeam. Michigan, place where young minds go to get molded. You got a school here? Oh, fuck no, waste of time. But I love this place, man. And all no shit seriousness, you got everything here. Artists, religious freaks, Republican Nazis. It's kind of like Beverly Hills 90210, except the people aren't boring. Well, here we go, man. Thanks for the ride, Toad. Oh, no, man, thank you. I mean, fuck. You've given me a whole new outlook on America, not to mention chicks. I'll never forget you. You're my brother now. Thanks. Oh, listen, I'm gonna get some stage time this week. Come see the show. Here's my card. You never told me you were a performance artist. Yeah, I don't know what it is. When I'm on stage smashing McDonald's apple pie with a baseball bat, I feel so fucking alive. Statement against corporate censorship. Shit, chicks love that shit. You interested in the room? Yes. I'm Blanche from Texas. Duncan. I grew up in the 60s, you know? Congratulations. Well, it's $400 for the top floor, and I'd prefer if you didn't smoke in bed. I don't sleep. 
buy me a drink sometime? Sure. Hey, Frog. Hey, Toad. This was in the mailbox. Thanks. Where'd you hide the ice cream? Under the couch. All right. Oh, Nintendo, huh? You and Calvin have a fight? You still haven't told him? Don't start. Start what? You know how he feels about that kind of thing. Tell me again. Toad. Come on! After Calvin's mother went to therapy, she stopped shaving her legs and moved to San Francisco with this woman in her bowling league. <laughs> in her bowling league? It's fucking perfect. Well, you still shouldn't have to hide the bills from the asshole. I'm working on it. Still reading codependent no more? Can't get past the first chapter. I hear you, sister. You really gonna sell your car? I'm here to stay. What do you do when the money runs out? I don't know. Sounds like a plan. Good to see you, Jen. You too, Toad. Jenny! Toad, give me your word. You got it. Fuck, that was some lip smacking falafel, huh, Calvin? I'll tell you, boy. Here we are. Which one's the decaf? Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Toad? Calvin? Jenny told me you had a little trouble at home. A little. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't be sorry. It's time to leave anyway. Besides, I got this great new idea for a show. It's fucking amazing. That's great. Listen, Toad. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. You're uh, Jenny's brother, and in that respect, you're like my brother. But the bar exam is next week, and I really need to have things quiet around here for a while. You understand, of course? Well, can I ask you something? Certainly. I'm just curious. What's it like being a full-time asshole? Excuse me? Asshole. Full-time. You. Just get out. Okay. But I'm warning you, Calvin. When you're 50 years old and some beige cubicle up to your ass and roll eight, don't come crying to me. I won't. Oh, hey, you playing tomorrow? Yes. Cool. this vision. Gladys Toad, Toad Gladys. Hey, Gladys. Hey, uh, why do they call you Toad? Because I'm so horny. I love your hair. Oh, thanks. I grew up myself. Groovy. What's you doing, babe? No, oh, I'm trying to re-experience some childhood trauma. How was work? Okay. Want to make love? Sure. Squeeze? Yeah? I played full moon fever all day and nothing happened. I know. I saw the cake. Couldn't help myself. I don't know. Maybe I need to change the scenery or something. How much pensive brooding can I do in my old college town anyway? Lots. No, I mean without getting a job. Oh. Maybe you should try therapy. Like Jenny? Sure. The thought.
Man. Oh, hey, Duncan. Dorian here was just talking about some South American feminist poet. Name escapes me. Anyway, I thought you two could talk about it while me and Gladys wrinkle sheets a bit. What do you say? Sure. Cool. Do <laughs> you have anything? Oh, we're talking non oxymal nine rib to your babe. Oh, bitch I love this girl. Duncan, you hear me? I love this girl! Just tell me what happened. Well, she said she just wanted to be friends. I guess she's used to this kind of thing by now, but coming from a nymphomaniac, it was kind of demoralizing. I'd like to find whoever wrote that myth about musicians and smash them over there with a bass amp. I hear you, man. If this shit doesn't get any better, I'm gonna start using Vaseline as a tax write-off. Phineas, what was the name of that guy who wrote that suicide book? I don't know, Julian. You want to borrow my copy? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Don't mention it. I don't know, Duncan. I don't know if it's ever really going to change. I mean, do you know how many times I've been walking down the street thinking about all the things I'm going to do when I get out of this place and some asshole whistles at me? Do you have any idea what that feels like? No. Have you ever done that to a woman? No. Good, because it feels like shit. And it happens all the time. Just like Gladys and Toad. And I'm not going to blame Toad. He's just in it for the sex, but at least he's honest about it. But Gladys... She does this to herself all the time. And she won't listen to me. And I'm the one who's gonna have to hold her hand tomorrow morning. Doreen, did you used to be like Gladys? No. Then... then why are you so angry? You really want to know, Duncan? Yeah. You know what would look really good on me right now? No, what? You. You know, I wish I could change the alphabet. Why? So I could put you and I closer together. And boys have used these lines on me, and as amusing as they might be, they don't really make for stimulating conversation. Not a real exchange of thoughts and ideas, which is what I'm after. Then one day, I met an older man, a distinguished director. I love to hear him talk. He assured me that my insights were stimulating. Our conversations lasted for hours. And we never once ran out of anything to say. And I fell in love with him because of that. Then, after a particularly heated conversation, he invited me to his apartment. And the conversation ended after we had sex. And it didn't pick up in the morning. I let a 42-year-old boy seduce me with the PhD equivalent of I wish I could change the alphabet so I could put you and I closer together. I'm angry because I miss those conversations. I'm angry because I know that Gladys is so much more than just a piece of ass. I'm so tired of watching people miss each other. And I'm tired of talking to myself all the time. Yeah. Duncan, can I show you something? Sure. I remember reading in the papers about the girl who was gang raped in a fraternity. I remember they blamed her. I remember Anita Hill. I remember Thelma and Louise. I remember hearing somewhere that sex was supposed to be beautiful. I remember when we were pro choice but rarely made them. I remember when we blamed men for not letting us do what we want instead of doing what we want. And I remember when we blamed ourselves for letting them. I remember that anger. I remember that feeling of helplessness. The future is my favorite place to be, a time when women talk about more important things than men, 
A time when all this is nothing but a memory. A time when we are all human beings. Mm, hey, Duncan, you get laid? No. Bummer, Doreen's kind of cool. Tell you what, we'll go to Cafe Pretentious later. My sister's a waitress there. The owner lets her sing on Wednesdays. It'll take your mind off it. Okay. Wake me up at three? Sure. Cool. Are you sure you're out of Diet Coke? I'm sorry. How about a Diet Pepsi? No, I really had my heart set on a Diet Coke. Would you hurry the fuck up, please? What's your problem? No, what's your problem? You're skinny to that fucking rail. Get some real Coke. Diet Coke tastes better. Don't give me any of that shit. Hey. Can I get some service around here? Julian, you have to mellow out. Fuck that. Give me the regular. The show's been cool lately, Matt. Yeah. Could you tell Beats to stop calling unless he has something intelligent to say? Can't deny him his freedom of speech. Beats, man. Fuck you. Why the fuck do they listen to this show anyway? It's like talking to a fucking brick wall. Ah, fuck it. Let him chant peace in a convenience store. See what I care. Self-obsessed ass white fucking baby boomer, come on! I hate the fuckers, man. All of them. We stopped a war, man. Yeah, it only took you 15 years, asshole. At least you had a real war to protest. Peace on Earth, my ass. <laughs> Buy your sugar magnolia one more time, I'm gonna kill somebody. the 60s, Julian. Do you know what the 60s were, Beats? What? That entire decade was nothing more than a bad movie with a great soundtrack. And now it's out on video and we've become its greatest hits album. But is that a bad thing? You said you wanted answers. Yes, I want answers. But I want ones that are gonna last. Do you realize that every hero from that era is either a junkie or an assassination victim? I mean, doesn't that frighten you? Julian. A person lives on a commune, running around naked, chanting about free love, and then 20 years later, he goes out and buys a BMW and names his kid Tad. Why? It's simple. That entire movement was nothing more than a fad just like we are. How can you say that? Beads. MTV refuses to show Madonna's video. Then it starts saying, choose or lose. Kevin Costner makes dances with wolves, and suddenly every white suburban zombie is saying Native American. You remember that? Yes, I remember. We hated our parents because of Nirvana, and then we loved them because of Bill Clinton. Then the polls changed, and changed again, and changed again, and changed again. Julian, what's your point? My point is that people are morons. Reagan Democrats, leg warmers, PC sound bites, break dancing. What's the difference? It's all a fad. Nobody follows through. Julian, people follow through. Not everyone in the 60s sold out. Yeah. Oliver Stone and the ones who died. I feel sorry for you, man. Beads, I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I want you to understand what the hell I'm talking about. Not another Wednesday. Come on, Nick. She wrote a new one. If it's about metaphoric spice racks, I'm pulling the plug. Don't be silly. in for a treat, man. Is she good? Hi, everyone. I'm Jenny, and I write songs that I think everyone can relate mm -hmm. to. This first one's about the environment. Oh. Uh, that's original. <laughs> I'm sitting in a field of posies, and I know it's time to help. Share their sacred kelp. I find myself drowning in this neon world of trash. So come on and let's recycle plastic and foam and glass. It's time to care and it's time to share. It's time to dare. Come on and share. The light. Sitting in a field of posies, a tree defines the man. So let's stop wearing leather sandals and bring peace to all the
How about some Indigo Girls? Who's that DJ we were listening to? Julian. He's the best, man. Every day from four to eight, the most frustrated motherfucker on the face of the planet. Oh, pardon the illusion to Oedipus. What's wrong, hon? Nick won't let me sing my own songs anymore. He says they're bad for business. Are you gonna quit? No. Calvin and I are saving money. Besides, I've waitressed everywhere else in town. It's hopeless. No, it isn't. You were great. Absolutely. Wasn't she great, Duncan? Not really. What did you think was wrong with it? Nothing was wrong with it. You just try to rhyme things too much. You've got a beautiful voice, Jenny. You just haven't used it yet. Just like the doors. Right, Duncan? Right. Is he fucking deep or what? Duncan's the next Rambo, I'm telling you. I love French poets. Well, uh, I have to go make dinner. Oh, come on, Jen. Let him order a pizza. It's Miller time. No, I really have to go. Thanks for the advice, Duncan. Sure. So you guys up for some video games? I don't know, Toad. What do you think, Duncan? Squeeze, do you have a favorite place in town? Yeah. Would you take me there? Sure. A fucking art museum? Okay, but after this, we're playing video games. So where'd you get the name Squeeze? It's short for Hank Squeeze. Who's Hank? My boyfriend. He's a painter. Really? Do you think you could do scenery for my show? I don't know. He still hasn't painted anything. How come? Well, he spends most of his time practicing for the Oprah Winfrey show. I knew a guy like that once. Well, here it is, Duncan. Khalil Gibran said, it's a friend's responsibility to fulfill your needs, not your emptiness. I like that, don't you? Very much. What about you, Duncan? Where's your favorite place? I don't have one. Well, you'll find it. Keep asking your questions. So apart from the Tom Petty tragedy, what exactly do you mean by inner turmoil and pain? Well, Doctor, I know I have something burning inside me, just waiting to leap out onto a canvas. But every time I pick up a paintbrush, I freeze up. The passion goes away. Have you ever tried exciting that passion by doing a nude study or something? Yeah, I tried that with my girlfriend, but every time she walks into the room, we just end up making love. So what you're saying is your girlfriend's getting in the way of your art. I didn't say that. Yeah, but that's what you were thinking, right? I don't think I liked your tone of voice. Then you can just leave. Fine. And tell Jenny to stop sending you overprivileged brats to me. Inner pain and turmoil, my ass. You wait until I'm on Oprah, pal. Yeah, I'm holding my breath. Cookies are still in the oven. I need to bake or I will explode with rage. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I should just forget painting and move to Ohio and become a pastry chef. It's gonna be okay. I can't believe Jenny sees this guy four times a week. What kind of answers is he giving her? None. She just needs somebody to ask her the right questions. <laughs> you know, maybe that's what you should try. What? Well, this friend of Jenny's brother was telling me how Rimbaud changed his life. Yeah? 
Well, maybe he needs to read a book about a painter or something. You know, like Van Gogh. I mean, his life was just chock full of inner turmoil and pain. It's a thought. Traveling finally through my own mind, I found a mirror much to my surprise. Reflecting me from out of nowhere. Jenny? Yeah, Calvin? Is that a new one? Yeah. It's nice. Uh, do you think you could play a little softer, uh, you know? Sure, Calvin. Thanks. Oh, Duncan, tell your friends if they need another eight, they know where to go. Okay. How much do I owe you? It's on me. Thanks. Sure. Find me a man sometime? Okay. <laughs> hey, Duncan. Guys, this is a philosophical nomad I was telling you about. Duncan, this here's beads, slave to fashion, not to mention left-wing political causes. And this here's stone. <laughs> Guess the name's kind of self-explanatory. Um, Blanche said, uh, if you need another eighth, you know where to go. <sighs> that Blanche is so cool. Just sit on a porch, rent the top floor, and sell grass. Can't think of a better way to pay your property taxes, can you? Not offhand. You guys up for some pizza? Oh, bonus. <laughs> You guys ever watch The Price is Right? Bob Barker's a fascist. Actually, Beats, Bob Barker was an animal rights activist long before it became PC. Once he even refused to host the Miss America pageant because they were using animal fur in the competition. Yeah, I guess his microphone's cool. What about those models, man? They're older than my grandmother, man. Babes nonetheless. Media, man. TV, magazines and shit. That's why women are so confused. They're programmed to think they have to be perfect. Yeah, I guess you're right. Even with something as stupid as douche. You ever see that commercial? You'll feel fresh as a mountain path after a spring rain. Wait, isn't that mud? Oh, yeah. Weird. So you're saying that until 1966, acid was legal? October 6th, 1966. Where'd you get the girl, man? I don't know. Toad, you have to let her go her own way. But I made her a mixtape, man. Okay, you loved her. I can respect that. But you have to respect her feelings, man, especially if she wasn't into you. Love should never be ownership. Let me put it this way. If she would have asked me to quit drinking, I might have thought about it. Shit. Where the hell are we? Look, Ma, no hands! I'm really scared. You can make anything out of hemp. Paper, rope, clothing, anything, you name it. 
I didn't know that. Of course not. All they say is that legalization would turn us into junkies. Well, wouldn't it? I mean, take a good look, America. We're already junkies. We'd just be more mellow. Have you ever heard of the phrase, mean drunk? I mean, have you ever heard of a mean pothead? Where do you get all this stuff, man? I'll give you a pamphlet. Hey guys, look. As far as I'm concerned, it was taxation without representation. But at least we finally got rid of the asshole. What if Clinton doesn't work out? Read the Declaration of Independence, Toad. The answer's right there. You want a slice, Duncan? I don't eat. Zen. Beats, can you imagine the guy that invented pizza? Shit. I mean, just think about it. Here's this Italian guy. Comes home from the bakery. How was your day, honey? His lovely wife, Maria, asks. Pretty good, dear. I just invented pizza. <laughs> I swear, if he were alive today, he would never stop getting laid. Hey, Duncan. Toad says you study people. That's right. You want to hear my theme song? Sure. You know, I listen to this song, and I see my whole life reflected perfectly. It's like a dream. You could lose yourself in it. I discovered this band after my dad took off. We used to smoke together. He was some hippie. Excuse me. Do you have books on... You're a um... painter. How did you know? The mock turtleneck. But I'll be honest, a book about Van Gogh is all wrong for you. It is? Yeah. Your girlfriend means well, but she doesn't understand the process. You have to feel your inner turmoil and pain. 
Yeah, but how... All my boyfriends are painters. Bisexual cubists, mostly. Oh. Here, take this Dostoevsky for now. After you've read it, come back. We'll talk. Thanks. Anytime. Bag. So what do you mean he can't rehearse today? He says he's too hungover. This is ridiculous. We've got to get a new drummer. I hear you, man. Hey, guys. My name is Gumdrop, and I represent the Student Coalition for Peace. Would you care to make a donation? Fucking pricks! Fuck you! She asked you if you wanted cream. Does anybody really know what they want? You've been reading Camus again, haven't you? Bloody hell. And what if I have? You're so fucking Sagittarius. Oh, that means a lot, coming from an Aries. You're the one that talks me into coming over here in the first place. Oh, come on, Jonathan, drink your tea. You call this cinnamon orange shite tea? It's a delicious, wholesome blend. The cappuccinos have more head than the fucking beer. So what you're saying is, like, the Yanks were a bunch of wankers. I mean, Rushmore, what fucking genius was behind that one? Hey, guys, let's carve a mountain. Yeah, that's full wankers right there. Fuck it, man, let's get a Big Mac. I think I'll have a McWanker. Jenny, a five-minute break means five minutes. I was finishing my song. What do I pay you for? What can I get for you, Duncan? Regular coffee. Could I hear your new song? Well, I have to work right now. Well, can I see the lyrics? Well, they're kind of rough, but I like the idea. I don't know. It's in free verse, anyway. What are you reading? Well, it's, it's the drunken boat. Sweeter than sour apples to a child. Green water seeped through all my seams. Et des taches de vin bleu et des vomissures me lava, dispersant gouvernail les crapins. Et des lords, je me suis baigné dans ma poing. Jenny, stop quoting Rimbaud in his native tongue and get to work. We've got customers. Do you guys need anything else? Can't you see that I'm discussing the plight of the Native American on the white man's reservation? Sorry. What seat you kneel? Hit that you are low. going? I don't know. How is he? He didn't say. Oh, jeez. What did he order? Regular coffee. That's a $700 tip. Oh, wait a sec. He wrote something on the back of the check. What's it say? It says, I love your song. Please quit your job. Doreen. 
Toad, I'm really not in the mood for this. Come on, Doreen, I got a great idea for a show. Well, let me guess. Toad presents Chicks, a study in duality. If you're pissed about your friend, just tell me. It has nothing to do with Gladys. But what is it? Whenever you look at a woman, all you see is a piece of ass. It's because all I am is a piece of ass. <laughs> okay, you, th you think that makes me slime. I can respect that. But at least I'm honest about it. I have fun for a reason. And what reason is that? Just let me show you the piece. It's about my family. What's it called? Naked Brunch. Okay, show me. Yes. <laughs> $700, and he didn't even touch the coffee. I you should have seen her face. I don't know. There's just something so magical about two bilinguists finding each other. What's wrong, babe? I just finished. Notes from the Underground, huh? Good book. You've read it? Yeah. I thought Dostoevsky's main character was a pretty astute metaphor for isolation in society. Quite similar to the philosophical writings of Nietzsche, but not as complex. When did you read it? Junior high. Did you once make one? A secure position is all they're capable of desiring now. Security once gained, heart and beauty are set aside. Cold disdain alone is left. The food of marriage today. How's the steak? Great. Thanks, honey. Glad you like it. Depends. Look in your nightstand. Where are you going? We're out of beer. Good thinking. I wish I were a lesbian. Rimbaud will do that to you. I hate eating ice cream when I'm not even hungry. Can you pass me those cookies, please? If I ever become a soap opera junkie, I'm going to kill myself. Wouldn't that be redundant? Squeeze. Do mm. you think it's possible to be with a man and still be your own person? Yeah, if you're your own person to begin with. Why do you let Hank call you a squeeze? Because he feels he needs to right now. He'll figure it out. But why don't you tell him? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for him to catch up. But what if he doesn't? He will. How do you know? Because I know him. What am I going to do? About Duncan? He likes you. I don't want him to like me. Well, and give him the money back. He'll understand. I don't want to see him again. Why not? I just don't. Do you want me to give him the money? Would you do that? Sure. Thanks, Squeeze. You're a good friend. Just show up at four. Are you sure? Positive. Okay. What time is it? It's noon. I guess I'll make an early start. What you thinking about, man? Squeeze is setting me up with your sister. Yeah? We better not lay a hand on her. Kidding, man, relax. Changed your life, didn't it? Yes. You want to learn more? Yes. Okay. Here's my address. Come by around seven. 
Listen, I appreciate your help in everything, but I'm not a cubist or a bisexual. At least I don't think I'm a cubist. Tell you what. Read this Kafka. If you change your mind about your girlfriend, stop by tonight. We'll talk. Okay. I sold my car. I'm here to stay. That's great, Tim. I'm glad you have somebody finally figured out their shit around here. How about you, man? You still live on South Division? Same overpriced shit, old. Same moronic callers. I swear, Toad, this shit is so bad, I actually consider going to graduate school. Julian, I had no idea. I know. I know. Well, I'm sorry, honey. He just wouldn't take the money from me. Listen, Duncan, you're a generous person. You speak French. You're every woman's dream, but I'm involved with someone, and the last thing I need in my life is more confusion right now, okay? Would you go to a poetry reading with me sometime? Pick me up at 7. Under in. Jenny, you've never been late before. I was worried. I know, Doctor. I'm sorry, but you see, I have a real problem. Of course you do. Feel free to burden me with it. Well, I met this man the other day. He told me I had a beautiful voice. Then yesterday afternoon, he spoke French and gave me a $700 tip because he loved my new song. And today, he asked me to a poetry reading. So what's the problem? The problem is I'm engaged to Calvin. I shouldn't be having doubts. I've never had them before. I don't know what's happening to me. Babe, let me tell you something. You've been coming in here and bitching and moaning for so long, I don't even remember my own name. Doctor? What is it with you kids today? Instead of lighting up a doobie or grooving on a new LP, all you want to do is complain. And the worst of it is, instead of complaining to get to the root of the problem, you just complain to completely avoid it. Why are you so afraid of the obvious? Because I don't know what to do. Well, I'm sorry then, but it's not my job to tell you. Squeeze. Oh, hi, babe. Hey. Jeez, what's wrong with him? He's been reading Dostoevsky. Oh. Well, do you think he'll still have time for my scenery? I don't know, Toad. Calvin, where did you get those? In your nightstand. What were you doing in my nightstand? I was looking for a pen. You clean so much, Jenny, I can't find a goddamn thing anymore. Don't have to shout. Yes, I fucking do! You have been lying to me for three months. Now, how are we supposed to have anything if you keep hiding the truth from me? I don't know. Well, then you just better sit there until you figure it out. Where are you going? Video store. Bring back some vodka. Don't push me, babe. smarter than that. Okay, even if they were only doing it to look better, so what? Does a woman have to cover her body to be respected? No. 
She has to stop using her body as the only platform for her movement. She has to remember the point about equal pay for equal work. She has to stop passing off politicized whining as a real agenda. She has to realize that the only reason men look at her is biology, okay? It's that simple. You know, Julian, I thought you said you wanted answers. But you're not even open-minded enough to discuss ideas. If you think the world is doomed, then get off the radio. And as far as politicized whining is concerned, you're the master. We have nothing more to say to each other. Doreen, I hope you're still listening to me, because you're right about me. But just ask yourself one thing. What direction would your movement take if it had nothing to rebel against? I mean, that's really the question, isn't it? Are men the oppressor, or are they slowly becoming the excuse? If you need an enemy, make the enemy ignorance, because being stupid is neither race or gender exclusive. In other words, if you want my respect, don't tell me what I've done wrong. Tell me what you're going to do right, because in this country, that's what it means to be a minority. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Hello, you're on the air. Do you have something to say, or are you just going to cry? I don't like you. You don't? And why is that? Because you don't understand how women feel. What's on your mind? My fiancé. Okay. In the throes of a domestic daydream, the girl calls a stranger for That's help. not it. Then why are you calling? I don't know. I have an idea. Why don't you leave him? What? Why don't you leave him? It's not that easy. Listen to you. You call me in tears, obviously miserable, but you won't make one simple decision. You know, they say it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Why is it her prerogative to make it up? You don't know anything about women. I don't, huh? Well, let me just take a wild stab at it. When you were eight years old, you had your first sexual fantasy. It either involved Sean Casty or one of the monkeys. Probably Mickey, because you seem like the sensitive type. Well, when you were in junior high school, you got in touch with your femininity by going through the mandatory blue eyeshadow phase. You listen to Air Supply, passed notes in class, fell in love with Matt Dillon after numerous viewings of The Outsiders. But then, once you saw the volleyball scene in Top Gun, you realized once and for all that you were a woman. It was then that you started to measure your self-esteem by pounds. Well, whether you realized you were doing it or not, you started comparing your body to the women in movies and in magazines. Not to mention the secret competition that went on in your circle of friends. But whether you stuck your finger down your throat or not, that all changed once you saw Dirty Dancing. Hooray! I mean, little baby was such a fireball in the man's world. The perfect mainstream feminist role model. And that Patrick Swayze. Yummy. So you went to college, thinking it would be your time to be free and experience life. But then, within the first week, you met him, Mr. Wright, or at least Mr. Wright Carr. What a gentleman you thought. Why, he didn't even try anything, even though you secretly wanted him to. But then slowly, as the months dragged on and the ring slipped over your finger, you realized the haunting truth. He was never after sex. He was after your soul. Go to hell! You don't like me telling you who you are, do you? No! You think I'm an insensitive, patronizing jerk, don't you? Yes. Well, let me ask you just one thing. Who are you really angry with? Me? Or him? Listen. I've watched my sister waste a lot of time trying to find daddy and change him. I've watched my parents long enough to know that it doesn't get any better after 30 years. And that's all I can say. The choice is yours. On a brighter note, I ran into my old friend Toad the other day, who tells me that he has a new show going up in the True Blood this Saturday. Later that night, my band will be playing at the Blind Pig. So, all you disgruntled people out there, check your local telephone poles. This should be a good one. Jenny, I hope you've cooled down, because I'm in no mood for this. You hear me? Jenny?
Jenny, are you back here? Do you want a serious relationship? No. Are you going to try to control me? No. Are you going to be sensitive and respect my choices? I already do. Duncan, are you a member of the Green Party? Strong, sensitive, full of wisdom, responsive to the slightest touch. What do they say? Well, you're going to live a long time. I'm sure of that. And you have a good heart. You see these two lines? Yeah. Well, these lines on your left hand tell you how close you were to people when you were born. And by comparing it to the right hand, we can tell how your emotional life has been so far. You see? They're still connected. That means you've had a good life, a happy childhood. Somebody you love who really loves you. Are you sure? Skin never lies. Well, what about my inner turmoil and pain? It just ain't there, babe. Oh, and about your girlfriend. You know she would never cheat on you. So stop making up problems that don't exist for your own inspiration. Unless you really want to be a child for the rest of your life. Cookies are fabulous. Have you ever thought of becoming a pastry chef? I'm giving you two seconds to get out of my house before I shove a paintbrush up your ass. Ouch. Oh, come on, Hank. Nothing happened, man. I heard you're a painter. I just need some scenery. That's all, man. I never peck with another rooster's chick. And again, my friend said that love should never be ownership. What am I saying? What's wrong, babe? I want you out of here. But nothing happened. I wouldn't do that. I know you wouldn't. Could you put some clothes on, please? OK. So where'd you run off to? Well, consumed by my own grief, I went to seek knowledge from this strange girl who dates bowlers. And she ended up reading my palms. Neat. What'd you find out? that I'm perfectly stable. Terrific. Want to make love? No. You don't? No. For the first time in my life since I met you, I don't. I want to drink and smoke cigarettes and brood and feel miserable just like everybody else. You really want me to leave? Yes. OK. Duncan?
I'll have what he's having. You shit faced? Yeah. Me too. A woman? Yeah. Me too. It's the worst, isn't it? Yeah. You want to shoot some pool? Sure. So after I throw her out, I start drinking and smoking and feeling like shit. Still couldn't paint a goddamn thing. My life is such a fucking mess. Nice break. Thanks. She wasn't even upset when I kicked her out. Not that I should be surprised, you know, she doesn't need me. She loves me. She leaves me helpless. God, she sounds wonderful. She is. And why are you so selfish with her? You're right. Who am I trying to kid? You ever had a woman smile at you? For the first time in your life, you actually felt happy? Yeah. That smile. Makes you feel like a man and a little boy at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She has that smile. And I don't. It's not because she's naive, you know, because she, she understands. But you feel like you don't have anything as beautiful as that smile to give to her. Exactly. So then try to replace it with your ambition or your ideals or your painting. And that makes you selfish. When I never had to be. Because the smile is for who I am, not what I do. You know what, Hank? Sounds to me like you could be kind of happy if you just stop brooding so much. I think you're right. Depressing. I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, there are some painters who found their inspiration in happiness. Oh, yeah? Name one. You. Can I buy you a beer? Maybe you should have worn this last night. Shut up. Could you wait for me in the living room, please? Sure. <laughs> Calvin. Jenny. Let me just say this. If you have some things that you need to work out, then go to therapy. I don't mind. Calvin, it's not that. Then what? I don't understand. It just doesn't feel right anymore. just fucking great. Calvin, let's be the family I never had. Now, Calvin, I'm gonna stick my engagement ring to the wall with a steak knife. That was a very subtle touch, by the way. Are you through? What's his name? 
His name is Duncan. Did you fuck him? Calvin. Did you fuck him? No. Did you make love with him? Yes. How liberated of you, Jenny. Leaving me for the arms of another man. What progress you've made. I'm not leaving you for him. Really? And what are you gonna do? I don't know. Oh, well, that sounds like a plan. You know, Calvin, I convinced myself that you were just under a lot of pressure. But now, I can't remember a time when you ever encouraged me to be anything other than yours. Oh, that's right. Blame me. I'm not blaming you. I just don't want a part of this anymore. You mean that? Yes. I wonder how long you'll last. Where do you want me to put the keys? I was born a rich, white child. If you look at me, you can see what's on the end of the silver spoon. I was raised in the suburbs. My mother breastfed me with non-dairy creamer. I spent my time in the mall. My life was really fucking boring. Big wheels. Star Wars figures. Green slime? Microwaves. Walkman. MTV. Atari. Home computers. Cable TV. Indiana Jones. Speed Racer. Pac-Man Fever. VCRs, CD players, Nintendo, AIDS! All that happened in the last 20 years. That shit was our childhood. No, really, baseball's a great game, as American as mom and apple pie from McDonald's. But, like any game, it has its rules. Well, son, we just don't think you're living up to your potential. We know you're only in the sixth grade. We just want you to be the best you can be. So that's what I did. Studied as hard as I could. A straight B student. And when that still wasn't good enough, I discovered something very interesting. <laughs> yeah. I could get used to this. world looks much nicer from up here. What are you trying to do to us? I'm 
shoving your silver spoon up my nose. I thought that was obvious. We got your report card today. Well, Dad, I figure if I'm well, a figure if I'm gonna anyway. die of a heart attack anyway. Might as well be from drug abuse. Might as well be from drug abuse than a lifetime of hard work. The land of make believe. <sighs> National parks on shrooms. Drop acid before school. Just say what? <laughs> Death Star Trash Compactor. <laughs> Calm down, Toad. Calm down, Toad, man. You're just freaking out. That's all. Just freaking out. Just freaking out. Get out of my house! God, make them stop moving, please. Just make them stop moving. Get out of my house. <laughs> Get out of my house. Just stop moving, please. Get out of my house. <laughs> Get out of my house. What the fuck do you want from me? The sugar plums that used to dance in my head are now equal plums because mom's on another diet. Dad's popping roll aids like there were speed. Every now and then they break out an old stack of 45s and reminisce about being young. I ask myself, is this what's gonna happen to me? Am I gonna treat my kids the same way? Is this really what happens when we get old? That thought really scared me. That's why I screamed. That's why they kicked me out. And when that didn't work, they sent me to him. Toad, you are the only one responsible for your own recovery. Self-pity does you no good. What are you trying to accomplish? Well, Doc, the only way to be 100% sure that you're not following in your parents' footsteps is to simply refuse to walk at all. I mean, that's the way I see it. Toad, don't you see that these problems are all in your mind? Well, Doc, that's just it. I lost my mind a long time ago. But I tell you what, I'll pretend to make a recovery, you pretend to care. And when I get out of here, I'll never be depressed again. So I erased it from my mind. The past no longer exists. If I can grow up without growing old, I'll think about it. But I am not going to waste my youth trying to become an adult. There is only today. I was born a rich white child.
But if I have anything to say about it, I'm not going to die one. Play some Skinner, man. I swear, during me, you're gonna bump some serious uglies tonight. I can feel it. That's great, Toad. I know. I am the pure soul lane. If you were a beast, will you wanna be trained? Wanna see you dead, man? I wanna see you maimed. Wanna see you suffer, break the glow to my face. The ground you inhabit is a wasted space. There's just one thing to do, you know you wanna confess. Just kill, kill, kill yourself, but don't make a mess. Toad, why don't you always talk like you did in your show? It's only fun on stage, man. I just wanted you to know, I thought it was amazing. Thanks. Squeeze, Hank had a life-altering catharsis, and he's waiting for you at home whenever you find it in your heart to forgive him. Neat. Jenny. Can I talk to you outside? Sure. Beautiful. I hear you, sister. It was a beautiful gesture, but I can't take your money. I understand. May I ask where you got it? I mean, Duncan, I don't know anything about you. Well, it was... It was in a trust fund. My parents, they died when I was just a month old. I never knew them. I just kind of wander around and live off their money. I guess my life is kind of symbolic in that respect. Duncan, can I show you something? Only if you want to. I do. That's original. Rick! Sorry. We're a uh, bitter critter. Uh, thank you, you beautiful people. Thank you. So you feel like calling it a night? Sure. So what do you want to do tonight? Let's kick his ass. Sounds good. You boys want to go bowling? Bowling? Yeah, bowling? Let's eat shrooms first. Yay, bowling on shrooms! Word. <laughs> April, I have to tell you something. April? Yeah. Let me start at the beginning. I was talking to this quiet guy who just read me like a book. Duncan. Yeah. How do you know him? Jenny had sex with him last night. What about Calvin? She left him. Oh. Anyway, 
he said some things, and I suddenly realized that I'm actually kind of happy, but that's okay, I can still paint if I want to, because I don't have to be insecure, because we both have our smiles, and I can stop being selfish, and I can bake fewer cakes. You wanna make love? Absolutely. Why didn't we ever think of this before? I don't know. <sighs> This is where I come, you know, when I want to be alone. The bliss is a nice touch. Never shown it to anyone before. It's beautiful. Duncan. Why did you leave this morning? You know that collage on my wall? Every place I go, I make one. Because, you know, it, it helps me to figure the place out. The thing is, when I do figure the place out, I leave the collage behind. And because it's already in my head. And I like the collages and all. I mean, they're nice and everything, but. is I've never wanted to take one with me before until now you've been alone your whole life haven't you I guess so I know what that's like thought about it before, but it's kind of sad, isn't it? No. The sad part is that you get used to it. Do you really want to take me with you? <sighs> yes. Collage is almost done. And there's a whole world out there to see. You know what I mean, Jenny? So, what do you think? I think it's neat. What do you think? It's not bad. You want to make another one? Definitely. April, have I ever told you how much I love you? In so many words. Chicks, man. Fucking chicks. What happened, Toad? 
She ties me up for seven hours, and all she does is read to me a bunch of South American feminist poems, which I actually found myself liking. Anyway, this morning she unties me, and she tells me if she can teach me, she can teach anyone. She wants to build a friendship. So what did you say? I said yes. What else can I do? She's cool. Sounds like you listen to her. Exactly. Chicks, man. Fucking chicks. So, uh, you were telling me about your suicidal therapist. Well, I'm not sure if he's suicidal, but I think so. Why don't you tell him about Blanche from Texas? I wanted to write a letter to Julian anyway. Okay. Doctor? Oh, okay. I just came to tell you that I left Calvin and I'm quitting therapy. Really? That's very nice to hear. Here's the address of a strange woman you should meet. Her name is Blanche from Texas. She sells marijuana to pay her property taxes. I think you two would hit it off. Thanks. Oh, and here's the money I owe you from last week's sessions. Goodbye, doctor. Goodbye. He's on his way, Blanche. Who is? That nice man you wanted Duncan to fix you up with. Oh. Just a warning, though. He might be suicidal. That's okay. I am, too, sometimes. Should work out, then. By the way, Duncan's moving out, and my brother and I are going to stay in his room until we get our own places, okay? Sure. Well? I just finished. Toad. Is it three already? No, but Duncan needs your help. <clears throat> what is it? You know where Julian lives, right? Yeah. Duncan wants you to give this to him. Okay. Wait later. I'm leaving, Toad. What? I'm leaving. Why? Because the collage is done. It's time to move on. Were you ever coming back? I don't know. But you can stay here after I've gone. Thanks. Okay, man. Shit. Maybe I'll see you on the road again sometime, okay? Maybe. yourself, man. You too, Toad. This has been the weirdest fucking week, I swear. Where are you going first? I don't know. You? Get a job far away from the restaurant business. Work on my voice. Sounds good. Duncan? Why me? What do you mean? Why was I the first person you wanted to take with you? Because? I'll miss you, Duncan. I'll miss you, too.
Thanks for everything, Duncan. You're welcome. I got Santana's greatest hits inside of my 8-track. What do you say? Really? Earlier today, I was, uh, given a letter by my friend and yours, Toad, who, by the way, put on one hell of a performance last night in case you missed it. It's from a guy named Duncan. And although he didn't write it to be read on the air, I'd like to share it with you anyway. Dear Julian, I think it all started with the Declaration of Independence. The idea that we had the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That pursuit is what took America from the revolution to the computer age in 200 years. But the progress has come at a price. The obvious being the people that were exploited to make it possible. The not so obvious being us. The first group of people who were given no obvious frontiers to conquer. We hear stories about the good old days that don't seem to apply anymore. It's a generation gap that leaves us without role models. But the bright side is that without role models, there are no roles. 30 years ago, that girl you talked to probably would have married her fiance because it would have been expected. But she ended up leaving him. Maybe that's what the 60s were all about, getting rid of the roles. But what do we replace them with? Without any guidance, the choices become overwhelming. Sometimes it just makes everything feel hopeless. So we destroy our bodies in search of an ideal. We try to salvage relationships that don't work. We feel we must do something instead of doing something that we feel. It's the prison of self-imposed momentum. And the sad part is that we get used to it. it. Reminds me of a song I heard the other day. It's called The Going Nowhere Fast. But the people I've met here have shown me another side of nowhere. They've pointed out the beautiful irony that stagnation makes it easy to stop and smell the roses if we just let it. What would we be if we had nothing to rebel against? Well, we could finally be ourselves. The first group of people who stop looking for the answers long enough to appreciate the questions. And all we have to do is make our own declaration of independence. We can embrace the right to life and liberty by simply realizing that happiness exists. Not to pursue, but to accept. After that, the only challenge would be to make sure with the rest of our lives that we weren't just another fad. I don't know, Julian. It's an idea. What do you think?
me. 